Yeah! Oh, yeah! Hey folks, welcome back to Campbell Trout Fishing. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Now what I'm bringing to you today is backed by popular demand. People often ask me, how do I find snakehead spots? That's what I'm gonna dedicate this video to. Some of this is gonna be brand new stuff I never showed you before. Some of it's gonna be tools that if you've been with the channel for a while, you've already seen. But I'm gonna show you how I use them personally to find these snakehead spots. And I'm gonna start by showing you how to find just the body of water, and after that, how to find which areas in that body of water should be most productive for snakehead. So, here's a quick rundown of the tools that I'm gonna to show you today. The first one is gonna be the USGS site. If you're not familiar with USGS, United States Geological Survey. You can reach this link through the Maryland DNR page, which also has a lot of information on snakehead. But anyway, that'll be my first tool, is the USGS site. After that, I'm gonna show you one that's a real love-hate relationship for pretty much every fisherman out there, and that's fish brain. I'll get into the love-hate stuff later, but so far we have USGS, fish brain, and then into the tool that shows you, again, it's a tool ran by Maryland DNR that shows you all the launch points throughout Maryland. It, it's a pretty phenomenal tool. Next, I'm gonna show you the many, many groups that are out there for snakehead fishing, because as people encounter snakehead, they get quote unquote snake bit, and you really don't wanna chase too many other fish after you've had your taste of snakehead. It happens to a lot of people. And then finally, we'll get into Google Earth, because that's how you're gonna be able to zero in on exactly which parts of that body of water you wanna fish. So, without further ado, let's kick things off with the USGS site. So folks, I told you that the Maryland DNR has a lot of great resources out there for snakehead. The one thing I really wanna draw your attention to today, and again, links will be in the description, the sightings map that they have, that's actually a link to USGS, but the resource regardless is phenomenal. So, these will show you where we've had northern snakehead sightings, and you can navigate to other species here as well. It's a really fascinating tool. But you can see all the spots <laughs> throughout Maryland and on up through, moving into Delaware, Pennsylvania. They'll show you where we've had all of these reported snakehead sightings and catches, whether it's by private anglers or those actually involved in the fisheries profession, like fisheries biologists. So, as I said before, the tools are out there, folks. Go and use them, and you'll find all the different areas that snakehead have been reported. So folks, the next tool I wanna to show you is the Maryland's Online Water Access Guide. Now this is again reached through the Maryland DNR page, and I'll have a link in the description. But if you click down here, it's gonna take you to an ArcGIS site. Now, once you agree to the terms and conditions, what you're gonna have here is a map of all the public water launch points in Maryland. But even more than that, once you actually scroll in and focus on one, like here's a well-known one right here, over at Rocky Point, if you click on the note itself, it'll tell you the site name, which county manages it, the water body it's on, the physical address, the owner, phone numbers to contact, website, is there a fee required? <laughs> is there a boat ramp or is it a soft launch? The list goes on and on and on. It, car spaces. There's so much useful information around here. Honestly, this is one of the tools that I was most excited to discover because it just shows you places all around the state that you can, you know, now explore. But if you want to narrow your list down as to the places you actually want to go and visit with all these different launch points, that's where we get into our next tool, which is going to be FishBrain. Now, once you're here on the FishBrain app, you're going to be brought to a page that is essentially like your timeline on any other social media site. And what that's going to show you are all the catches based on what areas you're tracking, which fishing nodes you're tracking, as well as the different people that you're following on the app. But one thing that's really useful, aside from being able to tailor your feed, because if you want to tailor your feed to only show snakehead or only show largemouth or only show trout, you can do that. But even more than that is the waters area. I think on the mobile app, which is how I normally use FishBrain, 
it actually shows you or describes this as the explore option. And that's where you can zoom out here so I can give you a glimpse into the scale of this. It's just insane. These are all fishing locations around the state of Maryland. I mean, there are that many. And as you go in and scan any of them, you're going to see the forecast for that area, the tides, the different species that have been caught there, when they were caught, and if the anglers provide the information, what they were caught on, what gear they were using. The information is just absolutely incredible. You can see all the species that were caught there, the biggest of each species that were caught there. Fishbrain is an incredible app. It's a mountain of information, but there is a love-hate relationship with it because it's the very definition of spot burning. <laughs> if you believe in spot burning, this is the very definition of it. And I'll cover this again at the end of the video. But one point I want to make really quickly is that I love being able to share information with people, get people into the outdoors. But when you go to these areas, please take care of them. That's one thing that really, really kills being able to share information with people. And is why I normally don't give the exact location of where I'm fishing in my videos is because people will overrun the place, over harvest and leave trash around. And no one wants to see that happen to their fishing holes, nobody. So the fourth tool that I told you I was gonna show you are all the various different Facebook groups they have out there for snakehead fishing. And there are a lot of them now. Like I said before, as people start catching and experiencing snakehead, everything from the fight to the taste, everything, people get really enthusiastic about it. So you're gonna see these groups popping up everywhere. But just to name a few really quickly, the first one I'm going to show you here is Snakehead Outlaws. And of course, Snakehead Outlaws, that's <laughs> thats my teammates, man. Those are my brothers. We're a crew and a group that's passionate about the species, about catching them. From top to bottom, we absolutely love the species. But there's a bunch of other groups out there as well. You have West Side Snakes, Frog Eaters, Snakehead Life, DMV Snakehead Fishing, just to name a few. There's a lot of these pages out there, and I'll leave links to a bunch of them in the description of this video. So on to our final tool. I've showed you the tools that you need to actually find the bodies of water you want to fish, how to determine which bodies of water have snakeheads so you can plan your trips accordingly. The last thing I'm gonna show you here is Google Earth because if you're not familiar with it, there's a special feature available on the desktop version that I don't think a lot of people use and it's a great, great tool. So to begin, what you would do to be able to obtain the app itself is download it basically through doing a brief Google search, you can find the desktop app and download it and install it easily enough. To demonstrate the actual feature I want to show you, I'm going to plug in Lock Raven because it's a well-known reservoir with a limited number <laughs> of available permits to be able to fish, so it's a little more insulated from fishing pressure than your average area. Now once you get in really far to Lock Raven, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to choose one of these tributary type areas. I'm going to go in this corner up here. Now, this is already really useful. It's already a great tool. As you can see, we have a stream that flows in from this direction. Anytime you have a stream or a river flowing into a larger body of water, it's usually a hot spot for fish. But here's what I want to show you. Here's the special feature. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the date. If you click on that, that's then going to give you the option to scroll through time and see all of the different photos that have been taken of this area since Google Earth essentially began. What that does for you is it shows different times of year, whether it be spring, summer, fall, winter, and it's gonna show you different levels of water within that body of water. It's gonna show you the different degrees to which grass, underwater grasses, to what degree it freezes. It's gonna show you all this stuff. And that's really important when you're talking about targeting snakehead because you wanna find those areas that are shallow, that develop a lot of heavy grass, a lot of heavy submerged aquatic vegetation because snakeheads love it. When you're trying to find snakehead in your local body of water, what you wanna find are shallow areas with lots of submerged grass. Will they relate to timber? Absolutely. Will they relate to docks? Yes. Even rocks, culverts, they'll relate to all those things. But what they love the most is gonna be that heavy grass. So use this time feature within the Google Earth desktop app to find the best waters you possibly can to maximize your chances at catching snakehead. Now folks, I hope you found this video helpful. I really wish you the best of luck getting out there after snakehead, but I do wanna make one last point here that I already said earlier. These are the tools that I'm showing you to be able to find these places for yourself, because that's something I believe in is teaching other people essentially how to do things for themselves so they can teach others. 
But again, respect these areas. As technology advances, the world shrinks. There's not going to be too many secret spots left anymore. What that really means is that especially if you're on a smaller body of water, ponds, small rivers, small lakes, fishing pressure can really quickly ruin those areas if we over harvest or if we pollute the area. So please take care of those areas. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Going to have a lot more instructional and just straight up entertaining content coming for you in the very near future. So thanks so much for watching. Good luck on the water and y'all have a good one.